in just a few hours from now, we will hear from policymakers at the Fed. And if economists surveyed by Bloomberg are correct, the Fed will probably revise its pledge to keep interest rates close to zero till the middle of 2013. Joining us now is Carnegie Mellon economics professor Marvin Goodfriend. He's on the economic advisory panel at the New York Fed. Welcome to In Business, Marvin. Oh, hi, Margaret. Good to be here. What are we going to hear at 2 p.m. today? I think the Fed's going to stand pat today. There's, there's good reason to do so. Uh, you know, the inflation rate has peaked, uh, and, and the Fed expects it to start to fall again, back into the middle of its comfort zone. Uh, the Fed has done a lot recently. Uh, just a few weeks ago, it um, lowered the cost of swap line credits to Europe. Back in August, it started to reinvest its uh, mortgage it returns from mortgage-backed securities in, back into mortgage-backed securities again. Uh, so there's really not, not any reason to change course at this point, I think. How do you think uh, we will get characterization of that decision to uh, lower that cost of swap lines? Well, I, I, I would be surprised if the Fed brings that up because really? that was a program, yeah, that, that was a program designed uh, to facilitate the reflowing of U.S. dollar credit to Europe. Uh, the program, by all accounts, worked well because a couple of weeks after the announcement, we found out that uh, you know 50 billion or so uh, dollars were taken down from the Fed swap facility to refund um, right. uh, 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 banks in Europe. I don't think they're going to touch that. They'll just let it let it let it ride and see uh, it'll do its job without any, I think, any further tweaks by the Fed. So, uh, a lot of focus has been on whether that. 2013 number stays in the forecast today in terms of keeping rates where they are. Are we going to see any change in language? Is that number going to remain in or not? Uh, I would expect no change in the language. I would be surprised if, if the Fed changed anything at this point. Uh, they want to see whether the inflation rate is going to actually move down before they want to uh, do any more stimulus. The Fed's policy problem is really, in my opinion, uh, to just wait, be patient, uh, because they have to thread a needle, so to speak. They, they don't want to in, engender expectations that they're too inflationist, and yet they, their, their sentiment to be preemptive against a, a looming potential disinflation or deflation. But now is not the time to take action either way, in my opinion. So what we won't hear from the Fed, you've outlined, but what are we, uh, what should we know is happening behind those closed doors in terms of monitoring uh, Europe, dollar strength, euro weakness, and putting those pieces of the global economy together right now? Well, the Fed is clearly going to be talking about uh, uh, prospects in Europe because the future, the next few months, the next year for the U.S. economy will be contingent, obviously, on, on Europe m m muddling through. And so there'll be discussions about how well Europe is doing in the muddling process. The other thing the Fed is talking about is uh, they've been studying clarifying their communications policy, and uh, that is whether they should be, be, become more, pro, more um, open about their inflation objective and more open perhaps about uh, their interest rate policy going forward. The Fed has been moving toward more transparency and Ben Bernanke favors that and there's a committee that's studying this. They're going to be talking about this at length at this meeting, but I don't believe they'll announce anything until perhaps January or even later. January or even later, I mean, there's speculation about uh, more color around quantitative easing, the third version that might be coming down the pike. Uh, can we set that on our calendars for a January announcement? I f well, I, it's possible because there, 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 there's a debate in the Fed about essentially trying to preempt what people regard as a weak economy next year. But again, the inflation rate has only now begun to peak and is turning down. And there are many people in the Fed that don't want to be too preemptive against a downturn that might occur for fear of stoking inflation expectations. This is a very delicate balancing act for the Fed. And while I think there's going to be a lot of discussion and possibly some heated discussion at this meeting, it just doesn't strike me as at the time to, to take any action one way or the other. So I would look for January at the earliest for any action on QE, if, if at all. Well, it's interesting because, you, as you say, there's that change in communications policy. And essentially, the Fed is trying to publicly predict its own future actions while still saving a surprise for the markets in a positive sense. So by not exactly. saying anything today, what are they building in as expectations for a month or two down the line? Well, it's, it's, it's true that by not saying anything, they're leaving the market in limbo a little bit. But given where the data is, uh, I think that's a risk they're willing, they would be willing to take. 
Um, I think they would much prefer if they had clarified their communication strategy already, but since they haven't, they're stuck. There's a kind of, as you put it, I think there is a kind of a limbo where the Fed is not quite happy with its communication, and the market is not quite happy with the Fed's communication. They have to uh, square that circle maybe in the January meeting. Marvin, thank you very much for giving us your take. Marvin, good friend. Appreciate your insight. Thanks, Economics professor at Carnegie Mellon.